firstly, before we get started with this video, I just want to say thank you very much to all of you that sent their well wishes that I get better from my concussion. I got one individual, thank you very much, that sent me some vegan chocolate pretzels. This is really cool, so thank you so much for that. I will definitely be enjoying those at the, to the behest of my personal trainer. And somebody else got me a card that says, heal at your own rate. Get well soon, seem bossy. Don't delay, get better today. Hoping for a speedy recovery. So thank you very much for Dylan from the UK. Third thank you comes to somebody who, I, don't, I barely even checked this, but apparently somebody, I leave these donation links in the description below. Somebody sent me a Bitcoin, like a full Bitcoin. I, I, don't, I don't even know what to say. I, and the thing is, I don't even know who sent it. So I can't even really thank that person individually. But whoever sent that, thank you. I mean, like the last year, with the uh, with my my stock portfolio has been like a, so that was an unexpected piece of kindness that made the concussion just slightly less shitty. So thank you very much. That was completely unanticipated that somebody would do that. Anyway, I just wanted to get back to you with some informative videos and some interesting stuff. I still have been having constant headaches, so I have not really been in the mood to do my regular videos, but. I, you know, since sending all this stuff, I do want to send you all off with some informative stuff. So here we're going to be working on an iPhone 6S that is not booting for data recovery. And I'm going to show you how to use diode mode in order to diagnose faults, how I would use diode mode to diagnose faults, and why diode mode is important. All right, so let's show you how you would get to diode mode. So this is my multimeter. Uh, so if we go to resistance mode, this over here is the sign for ohms, which typically means you're in resistance mode, so you'll hit mode or shift or whatever it says on your meter until you get what looks like a little diode symbol over there. And once you have that symbol, you're in diode mode. Right now, it's saying OL for open line or infinite, and when I tap them, it's showing me a zero voltage drop because over these wires, there's zero voltage drop. Now this is something that's really useful when trying to diagnose specific circuits so that you understand where to look for a problem. So if you have no image, or if an ISL6259 is not producing PP bus G3 hot, and you want to know if you should be looking somewhere in the ISL circuit or somewhere else, if you want to have any idea of how some sort of advanced circuit works, when it has multiple pins, multiple data lines, all these different places to track down, diode mode is a really great way to tell. So what I would like to do, usually, is go through every single pin of a connector, every single pin of a chip on a working board, put that in an Excel spreadsheet, and then contrast that to the non-working board to see if there's any differences. And wherever the differences lie, that's going to be the rabbit hole that I choose to go down. Because I need to narrow down the, which rabbit holes I go down, because there's thousands of components and thousands of pathways and 80-page schematics, and it can all get very confusing after a while. So here, we have a case of an iPhone that has no image. There's nothing showing up on the screen, even though it appears to be turning on. It takes 0.2 to 0.5 amps when I first plug it in and prompt it to boot by plugging in the charger and having it on the power supply with the battery connector that you can buy, by the way, at store.rossmangroup.com. I'll include a show right here. And the problem is it's not booting. So let's take a look at the screen here, and I'm going to bring you to the screen connector. So I am not up on ZXW tool. I think ZXW tool is really poorly done software, so I'd rather just suffer through this than use ZXW tool. So the, if you look over here, it'll show you that we have these are the connectors for the screen. So you got J4200, uh, J, this one over here, and this one over here. This is where the screen is going to plug in. And now if you want to guess which one is for the LCD, let's just go with the first one. So J4200. So if I go over here, we, it says display connector. It says J4200. So over here, it says display connector. Now on the iPhone 6S, I believe that the image and the touchscreen are actually on one connector here. As you can see, we have uh, voltage for touch over here. We're going to have uh, voltage for image over here as well so that all of this is mixed into one connector you got a 32 kilohertz clock reset thingy and well how do i know why i don't have an image so what i'm going to do is i'm going to compare the readings on a good phone at j4200 with that of a bad phone on j4200 and we're going to try to figure out if there's any 
obvious defects and see if diode mode will allow somebody like me that probably does one, di one iPhone recovery a year to figure out what's wrong with this phone. Typically, I have the other members of the staff do the iPhone repairs because they have much better manual dexterity with their hands than I do, but I thought this would be a good one to demonstrate our diode mode. So I am going to turn on the multimeter here so that you could see it on the screen. Hopefully that pops up now. Hopefully that pops up now. Hopefully that pops up. There we go. All right, so we're going to start here with pin 43 on the display connector, which is going to be 1.8 volts for touch con. And I'm going to put the red probe on ground, and the black probe is going to go on the pin of the connector. And we get 0.46 volts to ground. All right, that is a sensible reading. Now we're going to move on to the next one. 0.596 on 5V7 volts. Sensible reading. Pin 3 is open line. All right, kind of funny, but whatever. Nothing crazy. Pin 4, 0.352 for LCM con. Pin 5, 0.623. I mean, pin th for PP5V7 Mason, whatever, Avdige. And AP to reset L con is going to be next. And that gives me, hmm, 0.1. That's interesting. That's pretty low. And the meter's actually beeping. So let me just go and check that in standard resistance mode and see what that gives me. In resistance mode, that's giving me 94 ohms. Now let's think about that for a second. AP to LCM reset con underscore L. This is a reset signal that when the signal is low is likely going to reset the screen. Because, as I've said, underscore L means signal present when low. Reset is very similar to the reset button on your computer. If you hold down the reset button on your computer and you keep it there, it's not going to turn off, but it's not going to boot either. It stays in this mode of just being brain dead and not starting. And that's the same thing that's going to happen to the screen. So let's see what that measures on a, on a phone that I know to be working. All right. So the sixth pinup, let's check that in diode mode. And as you can see, I'm getting... Okay, let's put the multimeter on the screen. Now, as you can see, on pin 6, I'm getting 0.455 in diode mode. And if I were to put that into resistance mode, 101 kilo ohms to ground. So one board on a data line for a reset signal, I'm getting... 0.1 volt drop to ground or 90 ohms and on a good board I'm getting 0.45 volts just drop to ground in diode mode or over 100 kilo ohms and the reason I decided to start with that one is not just because I heard the beep because there were a lot of times that I would expect to see a low voltage drop to ground or a low resistance to ground but I wouldn't expect it on a data line a data line is not where I expect a low resistance to ground the only time I'm expecting a low resistance to ground when it's not actually connected to ground is on a low voltage line that's sending a lot of power so if we were to look at something basic like an Ohm's Law calculator over here. Let's just take an example of a CPU because that's a common example that a lot of people know of. So let's say you have a CPU that runs off of 1.7 volts of CPU vCore and it uses 90 watts of power. It's going to have a resistance of 0.03 ohms to ground. So the power supply for the CPU is going to have a very low resistance to ground even if it's not shorted. However, a reset signal, this is a signal. Keep in mind, it's not a voltage that's powering something. It's simply a signal that says turn on. This is supposed to use virtually no power at all. It should be just sending a volt at 0 0.000001 amps, and that should be it. So why is it that we have 90 ohms to ground? Well, it could be because something is broken. So if we were to take a look at the schematic over here, we'll see that AP to LCM reset con uh, is around FL4221. And that goes to AP to LCM reset L. AP to LCM reset L 
goes to U0600, which is... Man, <laughs> that's the CPU. And as you know, there's no replacing the CPU for iPhone data recovery because the CPU is linked to something else, which is linked to the NAND and blah, blah, blah. So now that we know that our problem is there in that section, now that we've narrowed it down and we realize that I don't have to go through every single other signal on this page, which as you can see is a very complicated thing. Like I don't have to go down what all of this stuff goes to on the connector. Now that we have it narrowed down here, I can start thinking, okay, well, what type of voltage in signaling logic do iPhones use? MacBooks typically use 3.3 volt signals to say yes or no. Enable this, disable that, do this, don't do that. It's all 3.8 volts. And iPhones, that appears to be a little different. That appears to be 1.8 volts. Now, we have two distinct possibilities here as to why we have that 90 ohm short to ground. Behind door number one, our CPU is dead because that's where this goes to, or the CPU has a short in the inside of it. On Behind door number two, it's this little capacitor to ground here. Now, as you can imagine, I don't get any easy jobs. I don't get anything that is simple. I don't have good luck like that. Uh, so I am going to take a wild guess that it's my CPU. Now, this allows me to do something very interesting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try sending 1.8 volts to AP reset and see if that brings this phone back. So what I can do is I can solder little wires, and by soldering the little wires there, I can then attach them to my power supply using some cables. So I've, if I show you what my desk looks like here, I have one set of cables that goes to this power supply. See, this says 3.7 volts at 2 amps, and this is using the premium power supply cable that we sell at store.rossmangroup.com. And that's going to be going to the phone to turn it on. Uh, and to, to provide it with power. But then I have another power supply over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach a wire between the power supply and the phone at LCM reset. So let's get that done. All right, move this over. This is not exactly the best camera setup, but we're working on it. And all right, check it out. So this here is a second power supply. And what I can do is I can actually wire this power supply to the AP reset signal, and I set it to 1.75 volts. For some reason, I didn't set it to 1.8, but whatever, it's close enough. So I'm going to try and do a little symphony of things here and try to get this phone to display a screen for me. All right, so we're going to plug in a screen. I have a lightning port plugged into the phone. I have a lightning cable here. And I also have a battery cable, and the battery cable is going to my power supply, which is pretending to be a battery. So this power supply provides 3.7 volts at 2 amps when I turn it on. This one over here is soldered to the AP Reset L Con, which you can see in the microscope. And it's a little wire going to the filter for AP Reset Con. So we're just going to, and that is going to the power supply using these little banana plug cables which you can get at store.rossmangroup.com. Don't delay, buy today. So we plug our screen in, flip it over. So first I turn the battery voltage onto the phone, which is not gonna turn it on or prompt it to boot. Then I'm gonna plug this in, and right after I plug this in, it'll be prompted to turn on, because it's just like plugging in a charger. And as soon as I do that, Right when I would expect to see the Apple logo, I'm going to hit this button here to start injecting the reset signal into the phone. And as you can see, I get an Apple logo. Now let's see if this phone boots up. This is fan spin. This is not actual data recovery. We're not at the point of getting data. This is just happy fan spin. And don't get me wrong, fan spin's awesome, but this thing's got to actually work. Let's see if it brings us to a screen where we can type in a passcode. That would be really cool. Almost as cool as having your own desktop ThinkPad keyboard. And as you can see here, it says unable to activate Touch ID, but who cares? Press home button to unlock. I didn't plug in a home button, but as you can see, the touch functionality works because it's moving. So once I attach a home button, 
I should be at a point where I can type in a passcode and I'll update a recovery. Now, as you can see here, there is an image on the screen, but watch what happens when I turn off the power supply. That if I do this, the screen goes away. Now, can I get that screen back? Watch, I'm going to unplug the charger, and I'm going to plug it back in. Nothing. Unplug the charger, plug it back in. Nothing. Now watch what happens if I turn off this other power supply here that's supplying the battery power to the phone. It's now gone. It's now turned off. I'm going to turn that one back on, supplying battery voltage to the phone, plug this in, prompt it to boot, and as you can see, we get nothing on the screen. It needs that reset signal to be shoved into it by the second power supply in order to turn on the picture on the screen. But that has to be turned on as soon as the phone turns on. If I wait and I turn it on later, you won't get anything. See? No picture. So we'll just unplug this, turn all this stuff off, and start fresh. One more time for good measure. We're going to output 3.7 volts from the secondary power supply. That's going to send battery voltage to the phone. We're going to prompt it to boot by plugging in the charger. And then right after you plug in that one, you'd expect to get the Apple logo. You would output on this one, and it'll give you an Apple. Because remember, that reset signal's got to show up immediately. It can't show up later on. So this here is a phone that's going to be recovered. I've spoken about diode mode in many of my old videos and how useful this is, but when you don't have a fully functional working knowledge of a circuit, it's very simple to just break it down, do diode mode measurements everywhere around the connector, the line, the chip that you believe is the circuit that's causing your problem, image, charging, touch, whatever it is, and then compare and contrast that to a working board. Then once you do that, make yourself a little Excel or open office calc spreadsheet and say working phone, touch connector, broken phone, touch connector, and see if anything lines up differently. If anything lines up differently, that's where you go after it. And I'll show you that I actually do have some old spreadsheets here for certain items that I refer to every now and then if I don't remember it that help me with my troubleshooting. So you'll have a bad board, good board, bad, good. Diode mode measurements, diode, here. So here you'll have voltage at every single pin. And here you'll have diode mode measurements at every single pin for the bad board and the good board. And I'll compare and contrast it. This way, out of the display circuit, I'll know which line it is that I should be going down. This is not only helpful for MacBooks, it's also helpful for iPhones. And the more you build this up, the easier it will be later to solve these problems. The more notes that you have on what these measurements should be, the easier it will be with time to solve these problems. This is an easy way to start f troubleshooting circuits and an easy way to figure out what lane you should be going down if you have other devices to work with and you have more devices than you do knowledge. If you have a board that has the exact same circuit, measure it, document it, save it, and use it for the next time. That's it for today. We have a recovered phone. We do offer data recovery services for anybody who's actually interested. And this is the desk of the employee that does them. It's uh, much better at it than I am. And that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. And with any luck, my headache will go away soon. Thank you for everybody who sent get well cards, cookies, chocolate covered pretzels, Bitcoin. I've got to say, just from the bottom of my heart, thank you for wishing me well. And hopefully I'll be back to provide some more informative videos once this constant throbbing headache goes away. So that, that'll be that.